Hey guys, have you ever asked, what's the difference between Lunar and Solar Kingdoms? And what is this Dragon Reborn game that everybody's talking about? And what are the differences with it? In this video, I'm going to list out most of the differences between the three and theorize on why there are three distinct versions of King of Avalon. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll actually show you where to get Dragon Reborn and play it and I'll give you my take on it. Hey guys, this is Heretic and it's Saturday, September 11th, 2021. And in this video, we'll discuss the three versions of King of Avalon, the differences, how you can play them, and which you should choose and why. But before we get started, if you're a fan of mobile gaming and wanna see more content like this, Click the subscribe link below the video and the notification bell. I try to post four to six videos per week. So if you click the notification bell, you'll be one of the first people to see them. Okay, so this is a lunar kingdom. I happen to be in kingdom 759 and we're actually in the middle of KVK. But lunar kingdoms start at kingdom 751 and they go through 914 and I can show you here on the map if you go to the world map you can see all of that then they pick up so after after 914 they pick up again at 5001 so you can just go here and type they go through 5288 for a total of 434 kingdoms Lunar Kingdoms have been around for approximately f a little bit over five years, five years and two months or so. The top stats are in the 30,000s, about 35,000. You have things like the Labyrinth, which is a dungeon that you can go through. I'll show you what it looks like. You can go through a dungeon and you can get coins. The coins you can exchange for items in the Undead Trader. Of, of special interest here are the accolades that you can get. They're temporary. They last for seven days. They raise some of your damage stats, so army, infantry, bow, and cav. You also have resources that you can get from the undead trader and some speed ups. Those are the most important things here. Lunar also has um, going with that, they have a spirit chamber here. And so you have this dragon spirit that you can get armor for. And you can, and there's different talents that you can choose from. You can choose from a berserker, which is all out attack. It's kind of the cav, the knight, um, which is more like the infantry. And the mage is more like the archer. Think of it that way. Um, and then, you know, depending on, you know, which one you choose and you have different skills that you can use when you're in that labyrinth, when you're going through that. In addition, you have an event that coincides with that called the Dragon Spirit Arena, and you can fight against other people using your, your uh, Dragon Spirit for rewards. In addition, you have the Spirit Altar. So the Spirit Altar, you can access directly through the Alliance tab. And within here, you can do Spirit Ceremonies, and you can do them for different items. So this is especially good as you're building up from 1 to, to 40. You have a Spirit Store that you can exchange your coins for different items. Again, a lot of Dragon items and some heroes that are useful when you're first starting out later on it doesn't have anything that you can get that's kind of the current latest stuff so in addition to that unique to lunar is the merlin trials and so in the merlin trials you each day has one or more different trials that you can participate in and they're all dependent on the level, the, the amount of power, the 
skill that you get from each of these different things, including artifacts, gemstones, research, dragon, equipment, etc. Heroes, etc. All right. Another thing that you get in Lunar is the Nether Fall event. Not the Nether War, the Nether Fall. The difference is Nether War is just a battle, a kind of a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, team battle, alliance battle, but it, there's no season on it. It's kind of like the friendly game in soccer or, you know, kind of like a preseason football game. It doesn't really count towards anything. Whereas in Lunar, you have Nether Fall, which has seasons that are associated with it. So you have win losses that you have, and you also have a store. And in the store, you can exchange for, you know, the coins you get. So the, the, the prizes, the rewards from Nether Fall are coins, different kinds of coins. You have this, think of it, the silver coin and the gold coin. And so you can use those coins to get really, really good things like royal badges, ogre eyes, philosopher stones, dragon speed ups, and everything you, a lot of the things that, that you actually want are located here in this. So it, it really makes a big difference. It's really important for you to participate in Nether Fall, whereas in Nether War, the rewards are just kind of meh and there's no season there's no store associated with it so that you can choose your prize you just get it's kind of like kvk where you get your individual rewards and if you win you get a a skin on your your towers and alliance buildings it's also as you saw there on the nether Falls store we had royal badges you also have royal badges available on your alliance store you have royal badges available as kvk awards rewards so here you can see them building up and you also get them on uh, as packs you can also get royal badges from the spire as a daily reward you can get one but it's something you can also get royal badges off of barbarians so you know one of the big differences here is it's you have easy access to royal badges. Another thing that's kind of unique to Lunar, to the Old Kingdom, is prestige banners. And you have them on almost every building. So each one has a different bonus. So for example, on the Dragon Lair, you get troop defense. You get alliance uh, prestige. You can get them from the spirit ceremonies. You can also get them as rewards as you're building up, and you can use them to rank up your, your items. You can also, later on, you'll actually get uh, up to three different types of, of bonuses here for your prestige. One of the things that you get from Lunar that you don't get in Solar is the shop event. I don't have one going right now, but it's amazing in that it's used to, to bring people up. So the shop event, they, some people refer to it as the 50% event. You can actually go, you can have the amount of resources, badges, etc., to go from one to 39 now. So all of your buildings. So if you use it right and you save your, your upgrades for the shop event, you can rank up really fast. In the shop event, it kind of works like the gold event in that each day has a different theme, a different item. But in the shop event, you get points for raising the, the rank, the level of your equipment one day. The next day could be your emblems. The next day could be troop training. It, and, and you get points for those, and you can use those points to shop and buy things, and you can pick your reward. And if you do it right, you can string those together. If you know the order of the event, you can get the, you know, upgrade your, you save your equipment up, upgrade for the first day, for example. Then you get points for that. Use that to get the items that are on the next day's calendar so that you get more points and then you can use those points to buy for the next day and you can kind of string that along and, and get more bang for the buck. 
Another thing that you get in in Lunar that you don't get in Solar is the Golem event. And so the Golem is a monster that you can attack over 24 hours and you get rewards for your rank in the kingdom. It's a pure offensive attack. You can't lose any troops or anything from it. So it's a good way to especially raise your lord level. Another event is the Firelands. The Firelands is a solo kind of battle where you're fighting against other other players throughout Lunar. And you get points that you can use for really, really good rewards at the top. You also get events like the Lamp of Hope event where you get a freebie type things every day. You can use these to raise your point level. And when you raise your point level to a different level like this, you can get you know some decent rewards. And if you go up the ranks, you can get hero fragments and things like that. So it's pretty good. We also have in Lunar, we have events, and there's not one going on right now, but you have events that will allow you to do spins. And in those spins, you can win things. You have those in, in Solar as well, but in Lunar, depending, you get points for each spin that you, you do. And then depending on how many points you have compared to the other people in your kingdom, you can actually get castle skins from that. So they're pretty popular for people who want a different looking stronghold. Also different in Lunar and not in Solar is the artifacts. So this is a, just another type of item. These haven't been updated in a long time, but just another way to boost your stats. Also in Lunar and not in Solar, in the Hero Council, there's actually a, a hero that will raise your, your march capacity. And so this is really useful in PvP, some PvE events, I think Alliance Hunt. And it's, it's more than this. He has, actually has a skill that will also raise it. And you can switch them out so you can do a swap. That's not available in Solar. Also in Lunar and not in Solar, you have this new hero called named Cillian. And his the big th deal with him is he actually will lower the, the amount of royals that you need to go from 40 to 45. Also in lunar and not in solar we have an item called the warwolf set and this will lower the amount of resources that you need and there are also knowledge gemstones and these gemstones will actually lower the amount of resources that are needed for researching so you can combine those together the warwolf set will lower not only the amount of resources you need to build, and it's significant when you add up the whole set, it's huge. But it, you use that along with the 50%, you know, shop event buff that you can get, and you can rank up really fast. Same thing with your research. Research goes a lot easier in Lunar because of the, the research gems that you can get. Also in Lunar and not in Solar, if you go over to the exchange, you have a marketplace where you can trade items and buy items, which can come in handy, especially as you're building up. You have the Alchemist Corner where you can trade items as well. You have the Auction House where you can, you can buy items you know, against other people and you have the black market, which is kind of the same thing, but you don't see the bid. So in the auction house, you see the highest bid. In the black market, you don't. You make a bid, and if you beat other people, you know, if your bid beats other people, then you win, and they don't know. And no one knows what the top bid is. So those are the main differences here. You know, 434 kingdoms, it's the biggest set of kingdoms in each of the, what I like to call the different types of King of Avalon. So this is a solar kingdom. There are 117 
solar kingdoms and I'll show you here on the map so as of today there are 117 the difference between solar kingdoms and lunar kingdoms is they're constantly adding new solar kingdoms so in the past there was only one game and it was all lunar kingdoms you, you were not there were no solar kingdoms so lunar kingdoms were growing constantly one or two new kingdoms every week so now what you have in solar is about three new kingdoms every two weeks. So we're up to 117. I started when 10 was the newest, which wasn't that long ago in January. So in solar kingdoms, the top stats have hit 4,000 just recently. So I'm guessing that lunar actually, I said, you know, 30,000 is probably right at 40,000 as well. So the difference is here in Lunar. So if a new player joins King of Avalon, they go to Solar. So if they download the King of Avalon Dominion app from iTunes, Google Play, wherever, they install it, they load it up the first time, they're going to go to, right now, today, they would go to Kingdom 10,117 in Solar Kingdoms. So that's one difference. So Lunar Kingdoms are the old kingdoms. Solar Kingdoms are the for new players. To go to a Solar Kingdom from Lunar, you would have to start a new game, pick not to play on the same kingdom, and then there's a... I think if you leave the checkbox unchecked, you'll go to solar. If you check it, you'll stay or go to lunar. So same thing from solar. If I started a new game, I would be able to go to lunar only if I checked the appropriate box to get there. Another big difference is in lunar, when you start a new account on any kingdom, in those, you know, between stronghold level one and five in that first few days or is it six or seven i don't know um, you're able to go to any kingdom in lunar so you could go to you know 751 or you could go to kingdom 5200 and whatever in solar when you start off so if a new player joins solar today they'll go to kingdom 10,117. If they wanted to join me in 10,010, they couldn't because what happens is you can only move to the kingdom before you and the kingdom after you. You can't move back further. And if you, like I'm in 10,010, and if I want to go play in 10,040, right now I can't do it because that kingdom would be kind of grayed out and it wouldn't allow me to move to it even if I started a new account. So that's kind of a, a big difference. The biggest difference, other than the stats, um, you know, in, in a solar kingdom, when you start off, you start off with rank one items and they'll quickly start moving you through one by one. So if you start off, there are no new kingdoms in Lunar, but if there was, the first day you would start off with whatever the latest rank item would be available to you. In short order, would be available to you. Whereas in Solar, they try, they're try, they trying to slowly get us you know, through the ranks. I think right now we're at rank 8, 7. All right, so the other big difference, I guess there's two more big differences instead of merlin trials we have knight of the lake which has path of legend and it's, it's kind of a cool thing and this is one of the main reasons i actually came to solar actually stuck at solar before solar i kept joining every new um, lunar kingdom to see if it kind of worked for me and none of those worked for me and i came to solar I, I tried a couple and then i saw this and i thought you know this is something cool something different so i'll try it out so basically, you, it, they take you through a training level. You don't you get a few rewards from that, but the main items here is you have these kind of battles that you can go through, 
and it works if you think of the way that Merlin trials works it's it's kind of like that where you have to fight um and d defeat a node and then you move to the next node and each mo node you go through you get different points and then you get coins depending on how far you make it through the trial same thing here you get more of these points that you can use more of these legend coins crystals um, that you can use every day and you can buy things like dragon xp dragon skill xp and you can buy your dragon emblem tomes as well so it's very useful and in solar the only way that you can rank up your dragon you can get these you know other than pvp and just the basic uh, xp that you get from you know attacking and killing someone uh, and just rewards from various events the only other way for you to rank up your dragon and your dragon skill is through the path of legend so you don't get those anywhere else and and i'm sorry you get them off the spire as well but just not as many in the beginning of the game you don't have the spire you get it later on you the alliance store does not include uh, royal badges yet i'm sure at some point they'll say enough people have reached uh, you know level 40 and now we'll shift you over and i know that's the way that lunar work but right now it's a little frustrating for a lot of people who are already level 40 because in solar it was much much easier to go from 1 to 35 i've seen people do it in a day and not really big spenders either day two days three days they're already level 35 so when a new solar kingdom starts it's not uncommon for people to hit 35 the first day or two the resources are about 20 the, the resources that you need to move up um, to build are at about 25 percent of what you would have to do in lunar but you don't have war wolf here you don't have anything to reduce the cost of resources other than the heroes that you know you have in lunar the same the same ones on as far as that so one big difference is the knight of the lake included here with path of legend is the witch's cauldron and within that you can have different spins you, know, you can you can put different amounts here and the amounts will change the percentage chance of getting one of these items as you move through the path of legend you get reputation levels and depending on what reputation level you're at you can choose to get different rewards here and then and other things here you can get items right now this is one step behind the the top level equipment so you have a chance to win the ingots the completed you know piece or iron ingots or um, meteorite to use to rank up enhance and to actually build your your armor so the will the witch's cauldron is about your equipment the forest hunt gives you a little little quest to do and if you complete them you have a chance to win gems gem tomes and the gem crystals and it works the same way you know the different levels depending on the reputation level you're at within the path of legend and then you also have the king's bounty and this one is same type of idea but for hero weapons and hero xp all right so speaking of heroes heroes are very different here in solar they have different skills and they have uh, of course different stats the stats here are lower much lower but the skills that, that the heroes come with but the skills that the heroes have are just completely different so you can't come here from lunar and think that you know everything about heroes because they are very different here while while solar does have the arena and the spire they're a little bit different 
as far as the rewards that you can get. Otherwise, it's basically the same. In solar, we have the nether war instead of the nether fall event. And like I said, the, the nether war doesn't have a season associated with it or a store. You get flat uh, rewards depending on how many points you get um, in the, the single battle. When it comes to heroes in solar, the newest heroes right now are Dendrain and Brutus. We don't have Katargan, Matic, Mordred, Guinevere, or Kiara, Kinglot. And more importantly, there's no Cillian, so there's nothing to reduce the amount of royal badges that you need to move up. Also different are the Excalibur Invasion rewards, which are noble badges instead of your royal badges that you get in Lunar. So it's really difficult to get royal badges. They actually cost about double to three times more than in Lunar. So it's very, very difficult to get beyond level 40. Also, the Draconic Stones that we have here in Solar are different. In that here in Solar, there are level four. The stats are still low compared to, to Lunar, but we go up to level four here. Which is weird that it is the one thing where Solar is actually a level ahead of Lunar. Also, there are no uh, Barbarian level six chests that were in the new in the new 11.8 update. And in general, most of the updates are lacking of most new things. So I can show you from the last update here. Whereas Lunar received new, two new events and new heroes, what Solar got was a portal challenge update, which is was included with Lunar as well, and the tower changes. This is pretty normal. Um, sometimes it'll say, you know, update announcement, and there will be nothing there. <laughs> so we'll have to update, but we really don't get any anything here in solar and this that's been pretty you know on par since the very beginning we really haven't received any updates at all over here in solar so there are no there's no labyrinth there's no firelands event there's no golem there's no events that give skin surprises there's no shop events there's no artifacts um, there's no heroes that increase march capacity. There's nothing that reduces or gives royal badges other than the, the store. There's no spirit chamber, dragon spirit arena. There's no spirit altar for ceremonies in your alliance for things like noble badges. There's no, of course, there's no Merlin trials and there's no prestige banners. There's no war tomes. So I, I didn't mention that in Lunar, but um, in Lunar, you can get these things called War Tomes that add a little bit strat of strategy to your, your marches and your PvP and PvE, where you can move things around that will give bonuses to either your infantry, your cavalry, or your, your bow, and you can put points into each of them, and you can move those points around as well. We don't have that here in Solar. There's no marketplace. We have the alchemist corner and that's it. So there's not a, a marketplace, there's not an auction house, and there's not a black market in solar. Where labs is, it's just uh, you know a sad place right now, just an empty place. All right, so that's it for solar. And now we'll go to Dragon Reborn. So this is Dragon Reborn. So a lot of people are gonna be interested in this. Dragon Reborn, is a direct copy of King of Avalon that is only available in some countries unless you know where to look. So in some countries on the Google Play Store, they'll see Dragon Reborn um, and they can download it and they can play it. And as you see here, it is King of Avalon. 
It is run by King of Avalon by Fun Plus. It's not, you know, anything illegal or anything like that. It is both uh, King of Avalon's Lunar Kingdoms and Solar Kingdoms are both here within Dragon Reborn. So think of it as kind of a new a new version of King of Avalon. One of the big differences in in Dragon Reborn is that Dragon Reborn will actually get the new updates that go to Lunar and Solar Kingdoms in King of Avalon. They'll get it ahead of time. So it is almost like the beta, which is kind of funny because the beta was basically discontinued. If you try to open up beta now, you'll see that there's like 40,000 hours of maintenance to go. So this is basically the new beta. And the more you think about it and play in Dragon Reborn, you'll realize that that's very true. So in Dragon Reborn, instead of paying with your local currency, you'll have to use these D coins. So you'll have to go through and you'll have to buy D coins and then you can use the D coins to buy items. So everything is purchased with D coins, not with your local currency. So on the map, if you go to the map, and, and I failed to mention this in when I was talking about Lunar and Solar Kingdoms in King of Avalon, is if you go to the world map and you know if you look here, this is all lunar, and it's weird, it goes kingdoms one through 12, and then it goes kingdoms 5,001 through 5,004. And if you go to the top, and you can do this in the regular King of Avalon client, and you scroll to the top right, you'll see something called distant land. If you click that, it will take you to the solar version of Dragon Reborn. Or, you know, in King of Avalon, it'll take you to the, to the solar version of King of Avalon. So you can see here, there's kingdoms one through five that are on Dragon Reborn and the solar version of it. So if I go back here, so really that's the only difference. So I'm in the lunar version of Dragon Reborn. So I get all of the lunar stuff, including all of the lunar items. So I get the same heroes, including the new heroes. I get the, the same equipment so the equipment from day one, I was able to, you know, had the ability to get Holy Eagle. So it's all the stuff that's currently available in King of Avalon Lunar. And I have a feeling Solar will match up with Solar Kingdoms. And you do get your, you know, the update here ahead of time. And it's much less expensive. So when you start adding this up, uh, the, the item costs are just much, much, much less. Even with them being much, much less, this kingdom's been open for a little while and the top stronghold level is still 34. So we don't even have any T11s here. And this has been open for a while. I've been here kind of dormant for a week or so and nothing and it was 30 when i started on this kingdom the top level person was stronghold level 30. so slow moving and low cost which is good so i know a lot of people would enjoy that and you have new kingdoms starting up all the time every kingdom that i've been in is very heavily populated with people from india so you'll see a lot of hindi in chat and that's because it's available in India, in one of the few places that it's available. So how did I get it or how could you get it? So all you have to do is go to your Chrome browser. And in there, if you go to apkcombo.com and search for Dragon Reborn, the latest update will be there ready for you. I'm not affiliated with APK Combo. I just, this is where I found it. I don't take any responsibility for anything bad that happens. Another way for you to get it would be to install some sort of VPN and then come in that way through the VPN. So you would VPN over to India. 
um, you would need first, it, it, there's, there's a process to do this, and that's the reason I went to APK Combo. You would have to set up, you would have to VPN to India, then create a Google account in India, then use that account to log in. Um, yeah, then you would have to set that as your Google Play Store account, you know, while you're on the VPN. Then you would have to uh, refresh until you saw the, you know, you would it would have to think that you're in India on your Google Play account for you to be able to download Dragon Reborn from uh, just the normal Google Play Store. So why do I think this happened? Well, you know, we had a free version of King of Avalon that was really popular beta. I mean, I, a lot of people didn't talk about it, but the beta client was very popular because it was a free to play way of playing King of Avalon and you could also be powerful and you were at a even level with everyone. So no one could outspend you and be super far ahead of you. You would get free items all the time to upgrade to the latest stuff that's coming out. And you saw stuff before they made it, it made it to Lunar or Solar Kingdom. So it was kind of the same setup. Um, in beta, your accounts would get wiped every once in a while. It didn't happen very often, but it could happen. And then the same people would go back right after that and start from the beginning. So you did have that that feeling of you know build up all the time for people. So people love the beta. It seems like they've gotten rid of the beta completely and they've replaced it here with Dragon Reborn. So that's my take. Those are the differences, the main differences between Lunar, Solar, and then even throw Dragon Reborn into the mix. So tell me what you think in the comments. Did I miss anything? Did I leave anything out? Let me know and take care.